Okay, so you guys are asking about Slemmy. Just a quick clarification on Slemmy. Slemmy actually, that was just like a rumor. He's not actually off any roster, off anything yet. We're on break right now for a couple weeks. We are definitely evaluating things, but we haven't made a decision. Slemmy's still on C9. Whether he's going to play or coach or whatever, he, he's still figuring out, we're still figuring out, so there's no definitive thing. I think those just got posted based off rumors. Those people saw us scrimming with a different fifth. We don't have a fifth figured out um, in terms of like a replacement. We're just, we're planning on staying with Slemmy for now. We don't know in what capacity yet though. It could, there's a chance it could change, I just can't confirm that. Make Cloud9 great again. We've never stopped trying to be great, we just went through some changes and some hurdles and you know, we got two new players in the beginning of the year, or a new player in the beginning of the year as Stewie, and he's finally grown into someone who's like one of our most impact players. Um, really well-rounded guy. Can still work on some of his like patience and stuff, but he's probably like one of our key players. He's actually super well-rounded, and patience is only an issue if he gets flustered or annoyed, but he's generally he's pretty well-rounded. Shroudy and Tyler have always played well under structure, and so the structure's changed a lot, and Stu's someone who could play in chaos. So we brought Slemmy in to help that out, which it did, but Slemmy is finding lately that he feels like we could tidy things up. So he's trying to make a decision, like does he want to coach, does he want to keep playing and try to like focus in on his individual skill and work harder. Like these are things that you guys will find out more in the coming months is if he's gonna decide to stay, step down. Like that's that's why that rumor started is because we were talking to the community about potential fifths if Slemmy did want to coach. So, just how it is on a professional team, it's not personal. Slemmy's a great teammate. Um, but yeah, so this year has been tough for Cloud9 because, you know, if you think about players like Shroud and Skadoodle, when did they shine most? Skadoodle shined most under Dazed first and then Sean Gares. Well, those are two in-game leaders that control the whole team. Not many in-game leaders, like that kind of like comprehensive in-game leader is fading away. There's very few that do that. There's like Kerrigan. There's Sean Gares, there's Days, Navi as a coach, Astralis as a coach, Nip as a coach, Fnatic as a coach, and Flusha kind of is loose. Uh, Fallen. Fallen would probably be the only other one I could think of off the top of my head who really just runs the whole show. So my point is, is it's going to take time, no matter what lineup we get, for players like Shroud and Ska to find be really comfortable. Like People give Shroud a lot of shit for his performance, but yeah, he's never been like the most insane like fucking strategist, but he's so good at the game and knows so much about what he can and can't do that when he knows and has a really good idea of how the team's like playing, he could dance and get chills. He's a perfect trade fragger. Um, he's per someone like anytime he knows where the opponent is, there's a good chance he'll kill him no matter who he's playing against. So the thing for him is just getting the right info. Skadoodle, great defensive opera, sometimes gets a little, um, like when, when a strat caller gives him too much freedom, it actually can work against him because he tries to get picks that he shouldn't because he's just trying to make an impact. Whereas he's not like a dumb player. So it, for him, it just becomes this like gray area where he doesn't know if he should be trying to get picks or not sometimes on T side. So like, like you see like Fnatic, like it's almost more worth it sometimes for them to have Olaf off rather than JW because Olaf, I mean, JW is actually kind of rare because he gets aggro too, but Olaf takes different types of fights and stuff as an opera, so. Tips on becoming a pro, play a lot of Counter-Strike and network. Put yourself out there. Even if you're not a super outgoing person, you just gotta make sure the right people see you play. Skadoodle over here, you guys know him as one of the quietest players. He came from another game and came pro within two years. How, how did he do that? He played a lot of Counter-Strike and he went to tournaments and tried to get on a team. So. Just gotta find a group of guys to play with and go hard with them. Isn't that right, Ty? That's right, Jordan. Sometimes you just gotta frag. Ty, are you in game yet, bro? Yeah, I'm playing team right now. Dang, is it smooth? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Ty's back there. Uh, you guys could kind of see the monitor. Ty's on that new BenQ 27 inch. Do you know the model name? I don't even know the model name yet. It's that, that's how new it is. No, I don't. Shit's fresh as shit. I'm a rifler. You guys been enjoying the vlogs. I know I don't know what's a vlog now that we're home and we have no events. I'm just like dirt. Although I did just get a little mount for my dashboard in my car so I could safely vlog while driving and maybe like me and Tyler like to go to the driving range although Tyler's a beginner, he just started, he's already hitting the ball, even though he's been a couple of times, and 
I might vlog us going to the driving range or just driving to get like some food or something. Maybe burrito runs in the car while we choose a random topic to talk about or something. Why do you stream as often anymore, dude? Well, you want to know one of the main reasons? It was twofold. The first started is when we moved into the house, I was strat caller, and I just it wasn't easy to do it as consistently. I was, it's kind of an excuse, to be honest. I was just getting like, I was kind of like, I had a lot of anxiety for me in the strat caller because I overanalyzed things, and I just, I don't know, I know I can call strats well, but like, I know a shit ton about strats, and I could probably coach a team well, but like, calling and playing was just like a headache for me, and so like, I was spending a lot of time thinking about it in the day, and then. I had some other internal things I was dealing with with the team and things weren't working how we wanted and so streaming just became like after practice since we started okay so this is the second part of it we started practicing at noon and 1 p.m. and I used to stream I'm not a nighttime streamer I don't really like it so I used to stream like 9 a.m. to noon or I'd stream 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then we'd start practicing at like 4 so I'd get like two three four hour streams in three four days a week and people would be pretty happy well, we started practicing at like noon and 1 p.m. And so like before practice, I just had, I kept sleeping in. And after practice, I was staying up late just to chill and have like free time. Sleep at like 2, 2 to 10. And then we had practice at noon. So what I'm thinking I'm going to start doing now is same schedule, but I'm thinking I might just stream from like 11 to noon as like a warm up before practice with the team. And I think, I figure an hour is better than nothing, right? I can kind of come on bullshit with you guys, depending on our schedule that day, play like one pick up game, give away some ESEA codes. Do you work out? If so, what's your plan diet? I don't have like a comprehensive plan right now. I'm working on it, but I have a gym membership. I've been going more, just doing like benching, squats, overhead press, pull up bars, dips, some curls. Pretty simple strength building workouts just to get me stronger overall. You don't do cardio or anything? I mean, I like running a lot. I don't know. Like right now I can't pretend like I do anything. My schedule's all over the place. I've been fucking traveling everywhere. When I was at E-League before a couple of the matches, I, you didn't see it in my vlog, but I like, I went to the gym in my vlog, but I didn't film it, but I was on the bike for like 10 minutes each day, just to like, kind of pick up the pace and put the difficulty like, I'm like at least halfway up, just so it gives me a little, get my heart rate up, focus on my breathing. Cardio before I play Counter-Strike, I find really helps my critical thinking. If you guys ever feel like antsy in your chair, you feel kind of impatient or annoyed with your play, go do some cardio. Literally, sometimes you could stand for 90 seconds, run in place really hard, and that alone is great for your heart health. Like I was reading studies the other day on kinesiology reports, and literally just like running in place, exerting 110% effort for like a 90 seconds a day, like adds like fucking so much benefits for your heart. So if you're ever playing and you feel like mentally unclear, kind of angst, just do a little fucking cardio, get that heart rate up, get some endorphins flowing. I actually really want to stream and do more vlogs lately because like, I know it just, I notice it actually makes me play better because I feel like I'm, I have more reasons to like be on the game when I don't want to practice, if that makes sense. Like I've played Counter-Strike professionally for longer than a lot, like some of my teammates have even played the game. I've been pro since 2008, that's longer than I think Stu and Scott combined have even played Counter-Strike. So I've been pro all that time. So I've played so much fucking Counter-Strike that I'm not gonna lie guys, it's not that fun always to just fucking play, like for no reason. But when I stream or I do some vlog or some content and I go play rank ass or I pug with my friends and, and I'm streaming or doing something, it actually, at least it makes it more like an event for me because nowadays I do see SCS as a job even though I have a blast at tournaments and I have a blast hanging with all the other pros and when we actually compete or play, even online leagues are fun but you know, just playing the game like I used to is definitely not as fun as it used to be, and I can I know it could affect you if you're not playing enough. So, Carnie Asad, dude, where are you heading? Learn. Playing a little workout. Go you're gonna go run eight miles and do a thousand push-ups. Ten thousand. Or people on chat, because they're anonymous, love to just say weird shit and see people's reactions. I feel like like the internet is the perfect breeding ground for like fucking sociopath or like schizophrenics who just have like an alternate personality and want to like fuck with people. They're just like, I'm gonna pretend I'm a completely different person and be an asshole in this person's Twitch chat. Talk about weird sexual fantasies while nothing's trying to deathmatch. I honestly feel though like if Twitch chat, like if everyone had to have their real like identification, like you know how when you do like uh, apply for a credit card, you have to put like your social security and like what real info like imagine you had to put like your fucking like 
obviously not for everyone to see, but you had to at least have your real picture and real name for everyone to see, and then it had to verify that with like a home address and shit. So that you, as a as a other Twitch user, you didn't see all that private info, but but imagine every Twitch user had their real name and picture on their fucking Twitch chat. How different Twitch chat would be. You would still see a lot of vax and LOL spam and whatever. But I have a serious feeling that a lot of this fucking banter and, oh, I just said it because it's on Twitter or Twitch shit would go away, man. Because I don't let it affect me too much, even though I respond to it still. But, man, people talk shit to me on Twitter or Twitch, and then I reply. I'm like, yo, why would you say that? Can you elaborate on why you would talk shit about this or that? And they're like, oh, man, I'm just fucking kidding. It's Twitter, dude. I was just, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, what the fuck, bro? You, like, if, like, if I... Like, if I was more insecure about that thing, you just talk shit to me about it. That could really eat at me. And you just said it like it's nothing because it's on fucking Twitter. Like, it's it's such a weird, like, conundrum because at the same time, who cares what anyone else thinks? But at the same time, when you aren't somebody, when you're literally an anonymous fucking name on the screen and you abuse that, I don't know. It just gets, it's, and it's not even, like, big malintentions because I know people just get so you get so numbed to the fact that you're not representing an actual opinion and you are so used to just spewing out bullshit that it becomes a norm for you to say dumb shit in Twitch chat. And I don't hold it against people. I just think it's a terrible theme of current esports and the internet, not just esports. I just, I just swatted you. I just sent the police to your house. It was a fucking prank. We just wanted to see this YouTube video. Yeah, is it a prank when my fucking dog gets shot because the police think I'm a fucking killer and they, my Rottweiler's making noise? Like, when I got swatted, luckily my... I mean, this is shitty to say, but lucky my Rottweiler passed away. He lived a good life. Rest in peace, Kaiser. Lived till he was 13. But imagine my fucking Rottweiler's out front, and I don't... I mean, my dad wasn't home, so they don't know what is happening. And I'm in my room. My Rottweiler's making hella noise. Fuck yeah, they'll probably just cap my Rottweiler. If my fucking dog died because someone swatted me, I, I would fucking lose it. Like, these fucking kids who troll like that on the internet... I just feel bad because they're obviously, like, lonely, or they find, like, whatever, do the other things, and, like... Might not even be bad people, they just fuck with you for no reason. Sony Office says, hey Jordan, can you give any advice to a team that wants to go pro? First of all, um, be honest with your skill level, right? If you can't convincingly beat like open teams in ESEA, then you know, at least tell yourself you probably have a good two years before you make it pro. Once you start being ESEA open people, there might be a select one out of every 50 to 100 people that can actually just step up to invite within a year, or pro, technically. So I would say for a majority of people, the grind is like, if you don't have a special skill set, you don't have flashy like talent, you got to f really hone in on smart play and playing for the round win and focusing on communication and knowing what it means to play for your teammates. Like, if I'm fucking sitting here back plat and I have two HP, even though I know I'm gonna die, do me does me delaying when I die help my teammate rotating, right? So if you're back plat and you got dinked and you know a guy's about to nade you, well maybe rather than peeking and dying, you know, staying alive as long as possible delays the guy coming out of every tunnel so that your team that plays mid can rotate to door. So you spot the radar as you're low and your team coming to the fucking B door gets there in time for when you die, at least they're coming out tunnel and he has a chance to fight them. Versus you peeking and dying right away, which encourages them to leave the tunnel so by the time your rotator mid peeks the double door, they're already wide swinging on him and he doesn't have a chance to trade. So those small details are what makes a player who doesn't have a lot of ability. So like if Scream was back plat in that scenario, maybe he says, fuck it, I'm going to stand up because I'm going to one-tap one guy at least, potentially two more, just by fucking taking a shot with one HP, well, then you could do it. But if you don't have the skill to compensate, you need to focus on those small details. Trying to go pro as a team takes a lot of factors that I'm not going to just all answer in one sitting, but those little things, you got to find your strengths and weaknesses, find out who's got a lot of natural skill, put those players and set those players up to get frags easily and let the other players play roles that, um, you know, use more nades and utility and build your team around that. Watch all the pro teams. I mean, you can learn so much by watching the pro teams if you just objectively watch what they do. A lot of people focus in only on end round strats and smokes they throw rather than, hey, how do we take Catwalk and us two without fucking dying or something, you know? And you can do it like six different ways, so. Do you, what, what do you do when you play CS, when you play shitty CS? on a day, like days where you go 10 kills and 26 deaths. I mean, that's one of those days where you try not to overanalyze the issues. You just try to like look specifically at what's happening. Um, in terms of, when I say don't overanalyze, I mean, 
don't get dis- too disheartened. Like, it doesn't mean you don't have things to work on. I'm not saying don't try to evaluate. That's an important thing. But, like, you got to know, like, right? Like, it's always in your state of mind. If you're, like, in a really good state of mind, and you're, hey, let's play some counter I'm positive. You're trying your hardest, and you still do bad. Then that's the best time to look at it. But when you're, like, say you're ever playing online, and you're playing by yourself in a solo queue, and you're playing with random teammates, like, those factors, like, not having good comms, um, maybe not being so stoked on the environment, maybe not being as good of mood. Those little things are going to make your play a lot different. So, like, be easy on yourself sometimes. Um, if you're fully focused and you're just not playing well, then just evaluate um, the plays you're making and try different things. I mean, the, the key is Counter-Strike is there's there's a million different ways to do things. You just got to figure out how the, how your opponent's playing. You got to outplay him. So the way people play in Counter-Strike is always different depending on the level. Like, it's actually funny when, like, Cloud9, when we scrimmage, like, premier-level teams that aren't professional, sometimes they do things that just catch you off guard. And you, like, players like Stewie, that's what really frustrates him. I just kind of laugh. But that's where Stewie, you'll hear him fucking slam his desk in the practice room because some guy who makes a really dumb play. They run through a smoke. But because you're not expecting it, it catches you off guard. Now, you have to ask yourself right there, do you... What do you take away from that? One... That doesn't mean it's a good play because it killed you. Two, when do you expect that play? Well, when you're playing someone who's scared of you, who thinks you're better. So if you're ever playing someone who has the impression that you're better than them or they know you're better than them or you're up 10-0 in a game, you know they're going to get more desperate, so you expect the more desperate plays. But beyond that, you don't you don't just sit there and say, oh, fuck, I'm, like, I'm having a bad day. Let me just fucking be emo about it. Because one of the biggest you know, metrics that determines how successful you are not metrics, but uh, factors, it's just your mindset and your attitude when you play. If you have a good attitude, generally you're more focused. If you have a bad attitude, little things bother you more, um, you, you get disheartened easier, um, you know, things like that. So my point is just keeping a good fresh mentality is the first step of playing consistently good. And then obviously just, just putting in that, that same mindset, how you practice, how you play, you know. It's good to have passion, it's good to get excited when you need to rally the team. But it's really, for decision making and staying calm, it's really good, like, to just stay neutral. Because you're going to get loud regardless, especially if to make an urgent calm. So just try to stay neutral. And then if you really need to say, hey, one's on the right, one's on the right, one's above you, one's above you. know, you get excited the more the calm is urgent. But you don't want to always be, if you're always excited when you play, it's a really bad thing for your teammates because they can't tell when you actually need help. Like, if, if there's a guy right here and you spot him up cat and you drop off to CT spawn right there, one's up cat, one's up cat, that means, like, they're fucking coming off cat. So, but if you're not worried about it, be like, oh, one's up cat brick, could run off. But if they're chasing you, so you want your tone to always reflect what you're doing, and that can get affected by attitude, so. All these little things are what makes you play better consistently, because you just find a zone to play in, and you make decisions smarter when you're in that zone. Hey man, what do you think is the max age for Counter-Strike? When do you think all the old legends will be retiring, like the VP and Nip guys? Have you personally thought about retiring, or thought about when? I don't think there's an age set. I think we're all on like the forefront of Counter-Strike in the sense that like we're kind of deciding right now when we should retire. Like we're the ones setting the, the standard, you know, if that makes sense. So like Taz is 30. I could probably play till I'm 30. I might quit in two years or five years or, you know, it just depends on the hunger and I want to stay healthy and happy and, you know, keep making, doing new things. That's why vlogging and streaming is fun for me as a hobby. I want to kind of get back more active into it. Um, but it can be really tough, guys. When we travel to fucking Europe every month and two months, your sleep schedule fucking changes. You come home, you're this, you're that. They're all excuses in the end. If you really want it, I could do it. I definitely know what helps, though, is when you guys show me all this love. I really appreciate it. It's really motivating. Like, even right now, just you guys all tuning in. Kind of wish I could hang around a little bit more. Um, I appreciate that. Try to do at least, like, one vlog a week. Maybe I'll do more later, but I'm still a professional Counter-Strike player first. Not a YouTuber streamer yet full-time, so...